This is the story of one of my mentors. It's funny, I look back, I didn't realize how much game this guy taught me by just knowing him. He didn't like sit down and go, hey, this is what you do, this is how it go. He didn't do any of that. He represented the game by being the game, doing the game. He was a cool, M -M, cool mofo. And Tyrone, rest in power, because uh, he had, had congestive heart failure and he died many years ago. When he was in his prime, this dude schooled me like I, I had to look back to see where did I got some of these thoughts and processes and it was from Tyrone. See, this is the thing. I used to work at the company at LabCorp and this is what got me down here. The other day I went in for blood work, you know, cause I gotta go for a checkup. And I realized I used to work at this company. He and I both worked there. And I didn't feel any affinity or connection or to need to even say, hey, I used to work here. We were, I was so far removed from that job, so far removed from the people. And what LabCorp used to do was set up satellite labs where, you know, there would be techs doing work, uh, phlebotomists and stuff. And Tyrone and I worked in, he was the phlebotomist, and he worked in this lab. Then uh, ultimately I ended up taking his position, working as a lab tech and being a phlebotomist and running a test. But let me explain to you what Tyrone represented. Tyrone represented a strong, powerful, black man. And this is where I got a lot of my attitude from because the way that Tyrone went in there, you would have felt that the doctors worked for him. He walked that way, he talked that way, and he's like, nah, nah, we ain't doing that between one and two because I'll be at lunch. And walk out the room and that was the end of the conversation. And you know, I, I saw him do this stuff over and over again. He did not act as a minor part of this. He acted like he was a boss. And this is one of the weird things, because after Tyrone moved to another location, I go over to visit him, right? And Tyrone is with this little blonde. And, you know, they're just sitting there talking stuff, and they actually kiss in front of me, and he grabs her boob and stuff. And she is like a cute white girl. And Tyrone, you know, we didn't even talk about it, because, you know, that's how he rolled. He took what he wanted. And... Tyrone looked like a black Mr. Clean. Represent, you know, Mr. Clean, the, the guy with the bald head and muscles. That was Tyrone. That's what he looked like, you know, when he was healthy. And I learned so much from just knowing him. And there are many of you out here who are looking for mentors. And essentially, a mentor is someone just to show you the way. They're not there to point out all of the stuff and do all the work for you. That's your job. And I took what he represented because I remember when I first started the Craigslist protocols and I remember when this young white girl showed up, I was emboldened. I was like, we're going to do this. And now that I think about it, this what came from the prototype that Tyrone had put out. Tyrone was like, Tyrone wasn't scared of those white folks. He did not act like it. He did not tremble. Uh, once he got into a scuffle with a doctor, a doctor reported him. The doctor ended up having to change jobs because of that scuffle. Because see, Tyrone, he did his job very well, but Tyrone knew how the system worked. And this is one of the things that you must learn. Before you break the rules, you must know what the rules are. And this is something that many people, many people don't know what the rules are. They don't have a clear understanding of what the rules are, what the politics are. They just try to keep it too real without understanding how things work. Because this is one of the things I learned from the military. If you know the rules backwards and forward, you could get a general in trouble if you know the rules. So you must know the rules backwards and forwards before you break the rules because you know where that line is 
and you can know how far you can cross over it. You know that you could jump over the line when no one's looking because you know what the rules are. And this is one of the biggest lessons I got from Tyrone because when the, this whole thing was going down, Tyrone like, he gonna leave before I will. And that's exactly what happened because the doctor didn't know the rules. Tyrone knew the rules and he caught the doctor slipping on some stuff, which he informed the people that Dr. So-and-so violated HIPAA. And I don't care who you are, HIPAA is, is God in the medical field. HIPAA, you know, the sanctity and security of your medical records. And this doctor had actually breached some HIPAA protocols and he was gone. They don't play that. I mean, they're a multi-million dollar lawsuit over HIPAA violations. They, I don't care who you are. You ain't getting past that. So this is one of the things because he knew the rules. And he would break the rules all of the time. Like Fridays, Tyrone would just take off. He'd like, you know, handle this. You know, I'm about to go run some business. Dip. But he knew Fridays were very slow. And if that was the day of the week that he was going to dip out, that was the day because Fridays were slow at that location. And typically we might have five or six patients on a Friday because the doctor didn't want to work on Friday. So he didn't have a heavy schedule. And then he would have his assistant doctors do his work. But I learned so much from this dude, just being around him being in his orbit so much. And, you know, it, it, it got me to thinking because, you know, the other story time that I had put up about the Spellman girls, this was after Tyrone because I think Tyrone is the one that introduced me to the younger girls um, through his actions. Because Tyrone, he was 40 something. He was clearly older than me, but he looked real good. He looked real good and he was about six foot four with that clean shaven head, the genie goatee, the Sinbad earring. He had that look and he, he knew that the look, he addressed appropriately for the look. You know, when you ever saw him, he was always swagged out. He looked, he was super clean, always super clean. And this is how he lived his life on his terms. And this is one of my mentors who showed me the game. He, sh he showed me the game by doing the game, living the game around me. I just learned so much from this dude. And you know, it is now crazy how going back and looking in the looks and crannies of my past, how stuff is jumping out. Because Tyrone, and it, it was funny. Erica Badu, that her song was out, You Better Call Tyrone. And he used to hate that song because everybody like, you better call Tyrone. And he like, yeah, you know, I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for that. I got business to do. And he made that job work for him because he was working other jobs. So he was about his money. Because as a phlebotomist, he had like three jobs. He drove a very nice Mercedes. He was working the system. He would do stuff, you know, I worked for doc so-and-so, 200, 300 bucks for the day. He would work for the doctors. He learned how to develop relationships. He knew who to offend and who not to offend. That was another very important lesson. He knew who had the power. He knew who had the juice. And he knew who not to cross, you know, cross because you would see him uh, buddy, buddy with Dr. Sudari, like, hey, what's up, man? Dab, dab. He made it his mission to turn Dr. Sudari into his BFF. Doctor's like, hey, where's my boy Ty? You know, they come in there because Dr. Sudari, who was a low key boss, everything went through him. He didn't act like it. But if you knew what we knew, what Tyrone knew, because Ty's like, this place wouldn't exist without Dr. Sideri. He run it and he surely did. And he was such a low key guy that a lot of people would kind of like not give the dude the respect that he deserved because they didn't know who he was. And back then, you know, docs were treated much differently than they treated today. But, you know, rest in power to my dear friend Tyrone, 
who taught me the game, who showed the game, and who live the game. Because many of you are looking for mentors, and if they're, they're once again, you got to network. You got to get to know people. You got to talk to people. And you can have a mentor who doesn't even know who you are. Because many of you want your person, you want a coach. You don't want a mentor. You want someone that's going to call you on the phone, go over the game plan with you. That is a coach. That's not a mentor. And many of you want a coach, someone who's going to invest in you, invest time in you for free. And let me know how that's working out. It ain't working out because who's going to obligate themselves to that kind of workload for free? Tyrone, he, he, he mentored me by showing me the path, showing me what was possible by opening my eyes, exposing new possibilities. This is what this brother did for me. And I'm internally grateful for him because I, I was really sad when he was sick and I went to see him. And, you know, it was just really devastating to see this big, powerful man. He had lost a lot of weight. You know, he looked sick and he just went on out. And, you know, he was still macking, still trying to be cool in the last days. You probably have a Tyrone in your life. You probably got someone like that, but because you don't have your eyes open, because you're looking for someone to take care of you. You're looking for someone to coach you up. You're looking for someone to be hands on. When you start to care more about your success than anyone else, this is when other people will care about your success. Because he used to talk to me, he used to give me gain because he saw I was a low key dude, I was cool. And he just gave me the game. Once again, many of you are looking for coaches. You're not looking for mentors because mentors are all around. Kids can be your mentors. Uh, when I used to work with Scottish Rite, uh, there was a few memorable kids who had cancer. And I looked at these little kids who were brave, who knew they were dying. This one kid told me, he said, I got to be brave because my mommy, you know, she's freaking out because, you know, I'm going to die. This is an eight year old kid talking like this. I'm going to die, but I got to be brave for my mom. I learned so much from those little kids because in their dying, they taught me how to live, to be courageous, to be the man, to accept responsibility. These little kids were accepting huge responsibility. This guy had taken his mother's feelings into account and he had internalized that. And even though he was scared, they were poking him, they were doing all these tests on him, he was still a smiling, brave little kid. And I took that lesson because it's a choice. It is a choice. It is not something that you have to actually have a schooling in. He chose to take that leadership boss position for it to be a comfort to his mother. And I remember working in the hospital, it was always scary because you, you never know when you, you, you would see people in the cafeteria, you, you, you'd be, you walked on pins and needles because you didn't want to ask how someone was doing because you never know what these people were going through. You, you know, grief affects people different ways. So you could go down here and they could be look like they're having a good day. You could say, hey, how so and so? Oh, he's crashing. They don't expect him to live to tomorrow. You know, it, it's just such life and death issues constantly. And this is one of the things that I learned that Scott is right. You know, your mentors are all around you. If you just open up your eyes. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe, hit that button, and I'll see you guys in the next one.